Hey everyone, it's Nicholas Wilton at Art to Life. Happy Sunday. I wanted to talk today about getting started in your art again, often because you've been away or maybe you're just uh, in between paintings, but I get this question a ton. It's something we all struggle with, getting momentum back and keep on going. So today I'm gonna to share a few ideas about how to do that, ideas that I've come up with, but also these are ideas that people have given me and I just, they became really good and they're helpful, so I tell them to people. A few years ago, I went to Africa and I took all these pictures and I don't know if many of you have been to Africa, but it's just an amazing place. And the palette of Africa is extraordinarily different than, than where I live now. It's got just all these earth tones and burnt charcoal colors and it's just it's really really cool and that was something that I took away uh, from my experience there and I came home with so many photographs mostly about color so I came back and I'd been gone about three weeks and I started uh, cataloging these colors I I thought I should I wanted to incorporate these into my work so I took pieces of paper and started putting them down, you know, mixing up these earth tones, really cool combination. But the project kind of grew in scope. <laughs> and I just, you know, I started categorizing them and then I had all kind of like the earth tones and then I had the green tones and then I had some of my favorite combinations. And I, I just kept going with this and going with this. And, and I wrote down, I started to write the numbers of, you know, so I could organize it. And I realized after a couple of days into this that I was doing this because I was intimidated to start again. I'd been a while and I just couldn't believe that I had created this whole project that was cool, but it wasn't, it really wasn't that helpful. And, and uh, it was really to avoid doing my art. And we all do this. And I had a conversation the other day in the building uh, with some artist friends and it was cracking me up. All the things we do to avoid doing our art. And so I asked this question uh, inside the Art to Life uh, Artists Free Facebook group that we have. And I just, I got all these amazing responses and there's, of course it's so varied, but I just thought I'd share with, with you guys some of this because ultimately it's sort of comforting. You think you're the only person that does this, but there's a lot, I think there's like 200 comments here, but I'll read a few of these. Uh, there's some good ideas here and also, you know, good ideas to how to avoid your work too. Uh, Faye writes, I write, she writes all over the canvas, either something from my mind, swear word, poetry, shopping list. It doesn't matter. It's just a great way of covering that white space, uh, which is kind of cool. You just like start writing because writing's so easy. Uh, Michelle McCoo says, I also clean and look to other people's art, then drink tea. Uh, Glenn uh, Greenbaum says, uh, took a 45 year sabbatical to raise my family and support my life. I have a career and, my, and I'm back and I think I'm just, I just started my first oil painting since art school, right? Like we can, we can leave for a long time, right? And when the excuses, and I don't, wouldn't say that's an excuse, but when your life gets in the way and you, 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 can, you can go into hibernation for a long time. Uh, Mary, Mary uh, Vergara says, I think it'll be too much work to get everything set up. Then I have to put it all away, or the light isn't right, or the ceiling's too low. Uh, Sue Carter practices her clarinet, and she plays Candy Crush, which I haven't done, but everyone keeps talking about this. Uh, put out the washing, bring in the washing, um, do some gardening. She never cleans. A lot of people clean. That's really uh, common. Ina uh, says, uh, gives us this great quote from Picasso, Inspiration does exist, but it must find you working. Pretty cool, I've never heard that. Uh, Diane DeMori, I start reading a new book and tell myself, when I finish this book, I'll start a new painting. Then I start another book. Uh, Veronica Lamont, watches around the sink, wipes down the kitchen surfaces, check dust on stair skirting boards, <laughs> look at Facebook. Hey, all these jobs need doing. Uh, Diane just Diane Williams simply, simply peels paint off her palettes. Um, Susan McGarry, she decides to cook the most complicated recipe <laughs> of Yotam Odalangi um, or bake Mary Berry cakes, telling myself how creative I'm being. Um, 
Becky Brandel, I think gets the word. She goes, I watch you. <laughs> uh, um, Linda Henning uh, mows the grass, right? Uh, Mar uh, Marty Nuku uh, buys stuff. Um, uh, Vera bakes cookies and or convinces herself a headache's coming on. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, uh, Liz Payne sits with coffee in hand and does a Sudoku puzzle, which usually doesn't come out the first time. And then she gets agitated and yells at herself to put the puzzle down. And by the time I take notice of my own advice, it's nearing mealtime. So really, there's no time to start now, is there? Anyway, uh, you get it, right? It's, it's, it's super common. And if you get nothing else out of this Sunday little conversation, uh, you should feel comforted that, that we all do this uh, and, and that you're not alone. But a couple ideas here that know that the more art you make, the more you do this, the more you do, the frequency, the more you do, the more you will do. It just, and, and of course, the inverse is true also. The, the less you do, the less you do, and it, it tends to snowball. So it's kind of important to talk about this because you want to break that. And even if it's a little bit, um, that will work in your favor. It's just, it just gets it in your head and it's easier to come back in and you're on a roll. A huge thing that I talk a lot about in all my courses and programs and everything is this idea of uh, time and that I see totally, and it's been, you know, the science of learning teaches us that uh, learning happens better with frequency. Doing small amounts of an activity over time, little break, breaks of time really add up as opposed to trying to wait and wait and wait and then just doing, you know, grabbing five hours on the weekend because that's what you've managed. It's almost better to have, uh, you know, three or four 20, 30 minute times when you're making your work. You see, wh wh why this is so is because when you make something and you create something, you, you're making it, and then when you leave uh, and you come back, it's, it's in the absence of, of it is when you actually learn. When you come back, you see things objectively and you see things differently, and then you can, you improve, and you, you improve a little bit, and then you do it again, you improve a little bit. It's, it's this idea of visitation and absence, visitation, absence, and it's going back and forth, back and forth. A lot of folks don't make work, don't want to, don't feel they can do art because they don't have the time. And this really flies in the face of it. You actually, it works really well if someone's very busy because fitting it in, little breaks here and there, uh, is, is, the, is the faster, more efficient way to learn actually. So little and often is how I like to think of it. And it's a huge, uh, it changes the, the game totally. Um, the third way I like to go into this and get working again, uh, especially when you feel like the stakes are so high and you're really rusty, is just you know speak to the kindergartner version of yourself. Get into it in an, in, in a, in an angle of play. Play in the how it feels to put down. You know when people are stuck in workshops, I'll say, listen, imagine you were teaching a kindergartner. You know a little kid and they were sitting down at the table next to you and they're so scared to do this and they feel like they gotta make something perfect, what would you say to them? You'd say, listen, just check this out. Look at all these colors you get to use. Just take this red and pour it out and brush it on. Feel how good this feels to brush it on. That's what we have to do for ourselves. We've gotta fall back in love with just the process of doing it because the result piece is why we're not going back to our work actually. We feel like that we have to make something really great. The last two paintings are really good. And I, I've, now I've forgotten and it's going to be hard. I'm going to make a dud. That's not how you make great work. You make great work by losing yourself in the process. And just like a kid coloring, they're not thinking, is this going to turn out? They're just gassing on what's happening. And their work is so cool as a result of it. Anyway, those are, those are some of the ideas that I use and uh, they're not they've come from people and uh, teaching and experiences, uh, but I, I think they can be really, really helpful. So uh, let me know in the comments uh, what I would love to hear some of your excuses you make to avoid making your art. I, I think it's simply hilarious. So uh, also uh, there's a link here below. If you want to join our free art to life 
uh, Facebook group. There's a lot of artists in there and there's some extraordinary stuff being made and uh, it's just a really great group of people. So I uh, hope your Sunday is really productive and super, super fun. Okay. Hey everyone, if you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.